Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. Whoa, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? <coughs> we may sound a little bit more better. We got new equipment. Wait, is this new? This is new. Wait, this is fresh out of the box. Fresh, literally. I just, uh, I, I just assembled yours. Yes, you did. I just assembled it. Just assembled. And it looks Avengers? Good. Yours actually looks better than mine. It's because I, I, I did some cute stuff to it. Oh, yeah? I just looked at it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Wherever you're listening, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all the other podcasts, Anchor. Old uh, Faithful herself, YouTube. YouTube, where we originated. We're doing audio. Uh, this is our bye week of us not having a guest on this week. And, the uh, bye week. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back with guests next week. With Mr. Rick West himself. Sheck West? Just kidding. Rick West. I don't even know what that means. Like, what does that even mean? You, you were saying that as we were setting it up. Sheck West? He's a rapper. He created a song called Mo Bamba. Um, it was pretty lit. They were playing it on the radio for a little bit. It's about a basketball player. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, It's okay. I'm not that educated in that. Host, if Host Sway's listening, he'll understand. He probably will. So hopefully he's listening. But he's probably not listening. He doesn't give shit. He probably doesn't, but if he does, he don't know who Shaq West is. Um, we just recently got off of a convention, like two weeks ago. I don't think we've really talked about. I mean, we put out videos of it. Um, but Hanex, we put out two videos, yeah. Yeah, we we did like a little walkthrough video and then a panel, the yeah. authorities panel. Um, what were your honest thoughts about Hanex? Oh, honest thoughts, a little overpriced. A lot of overpriced, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, there was moments of brilliance and moments of uh, quite disappointment. I think it has the opportunity to grow and grow well. Yeah. However, I think for the price, probably not recommended at this time. Yeah. However, if they bring, if they did bring down the price. I think it would be go really well. I I feel like with Hana X, I mean, it's an still an up and coming convention. So the way of how small it was, I mean, I guess they're still growing. I didn't see there wasn't a lot of people there crowd wise. Yeah, I think that was a. I think that was my biggest concern. Like I can get over and not having a lot of vendors, and not having a lot of you know panels and things like that to keep you. Like super intrigued and wanting to keep you there all the time, but I think the the real concern is there wasn't a lot of people there, and I think that has to do with the price. I think you so. Know, it's a pretty steep price. I think it was like what we paid thirty five dollars, and we got the early entry thinking it was going to be hella crowded. Yeah, and no, we, we could have definitely got regular admission. Got there at eleven. Got there at eleven and done it all because we literally did it all in twenty minutes. Yeah. Um. But, I mean, there was a lot of cool vendors there. The so vendors were really cool. A lot of talented people, um, from artists to people who, you know, make stuff, customize. Yeah. Makeup, masks, you know, a lot of talented groups were there. Um, I mean, I bought a couple Funko Pops and some patches. I mean, that's my kind of, that's kind of my boat where I sail off, you know. Yeah, it's, if Tony has money in his pocket. I will buy Funko Pops. Yes, Clearly, this last two days when I got paid did does not help my case. No, definitely did not help at all. But you know, it is what it is. If I don't have to make a car payment, we have Fast and Furious going down our street right now. Yeah. Um, but if I don't have to make a car payment till May, it's like might as well enjoy my money a little bit while I can. You know. Definitely. Um, and he bought me dinner. So that's a. That's I bought you dinner nice. too. We bought nice. Subway. Eat fresh. Um, but overall, I mean, I think. They just need a bigger location and to get the word out there more and more vendors and they need to do they need they need to step up like a scare LA type thing. I think I think the look I think location's fine. Um, because I think they still had a lot of room to to grow into the building. Yeah. I think the, I think their biggest concern was price in my opinion, because 
if you're that small of a convention, you know, you have to, to get people there. Yeah, so. it's 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 just it's more of a just yeah, like you said it's a price thing. I mean, it, it it has a lot to do with it being a small convention, and I feel that again we paid all we paid you know thirty five bucks. I think it at least drop it down to like fifteen or twenty bucks. Yeah, I think like twenty bucks would be a good happy medium. Yeah. Um, and if they're concerned, like try to only make it maybe one day. Yeah. Because uh, I, I think... Because I think Saturday's perfect, dude. Yeah, just do it as an all-day Saturday thing. Yeah. I mean, it, the convention is mostly meant for home haunters. Definitely. And and I think there's a... I mean, obviously, we know that that SoCal list last year was really big. Yeah. And so there there is a lot of SoCal haunters. Yeah. And so to get to them... You need to. I think you got to start a low price point because a lot of them are spending hard-earned money out of their pockets to make their event. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, typically the less money they spend on an entrance fee, the more money they're going to spend with uh, a vendor, right? Pretty much. So, I think there's there should be that. And if the reason why their ticket price is so high is because they're at, you know, the Pomona fairgrounds, fairgrounds. Fair you know, maybe they can find somewhere that's a little bit. Less expensive. Yeah. Because honestly, like, you can... This this honestly felt to me like Frankenstein's. Yeah. Um, where it was just kind of going up and down aisles and looking at stuff. And then there was panels, which, of course, at Frankenstein's, they don't do. But, I mean, the panels were... I mean, I think there was two that really interest us, which was we saw one and we couldn't stay for the other because we just had to leave. Yeah. And um, that was, of course, Ted Doherty's story and then the Bloodshed Brothers. Yeah. Uh, which I hope goes on YouTube or if it is already on YouTube... Um, I have not seen it yet, but I would love to see and hear what they said. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's more just based on having to expand and and just kind of grow. And I think the way you start with that is lowering the price. and then yeah. Lowering the price and making it a single day. Making it a single day. Yeah, because, like, midsummer, I think, is doing great because what if it's location... Um, but the thing with Midsummer too is like once they branched off the Scare LA team, yeah, and they started their own company and you know their own event. It, yeah, it started as two days and it was a smaller convention, and then every year it grew, it got bigger. This year is a prime example of that. Of yeah, they three moved days. to three days. Yeah, just for the sole purpose of people like me and you who film all the panels, uh, go through. Uh, and conduct interviews with the uh, home haunters and are just busy, you know, supporting friends, supporting <coughs> different things. And I feel with um, with Midsummer, they they added that third day just for you can walk the show floor and just check everything out. Yeah, definitely. And I I really kind of hope that they're not going to be. Maybe they'll do a panel or two on that night. But I'd really love it to be more like let's get people buying pro. Let's get people buying stuff. Um, let's get people going through the Hall of Shadows. Well, that's and that's that's another thing I want to talk about. So Hall of Shadows, usually those guys come in like Wednesday, Thursday, and they set up for Saturday. Are they going to allow them to come in even earlier now because of that? I, I'm imagining they're letting them still come in Wednesday or Thursday. And I'm imagining that it's going to take them all day Friday because I think they're only open Friday evening yeah what I understand about midsummer because the, the reason why I bring that up is because you know every haunt in the Hall of Shadows of course is unique in its own way yeah of course and you know there's some that are really short that just want to give you a little preview of it just so a little little tidbit but there's some that are actually pretty long and yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm speaking more on terms of the longer ones or even the shorter ones too because it depends how much detail they put into these yeah. things that how long Will it take a typical home haunter to set it up preview-wise? Is he going to need two or three days? Is he going to... I mean, is he going to be ready by Friday? Or I, I don't know how that's going to work out with Hall of Shadows, at least this year. I, I imagine it will be open on Friday, just so they can kick off the event with everything open. But I can I can also see if they were to do it Saturday, I mean, it would make sense, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, even if, even if only a couple of them are open... At least people will get to get those ones done with. Yeah. And maybe that offers them the second chance yeah. to go on a second time or third time, you know, depending if they have gold bat, don't have gold bat. Yeah. Which, I mean... 
Goldbat, honestly. Yeah, by the way, people, if you guys gold are going to go to Midsummer Screen, Goldbat is the way to go. Like, if, if you want to do everything, Goldbat. If you're just looking to shop around. Just get a standard ticket. Maybe get one or two panels and get a standard. But yeah. if you're looking to. If you're a diehard horror fan and you yeah. want to check out the panels and you want to shop around and you want to go through the hall of shadows gold bat is the way to go yeah and you're not just start trying to go like one or two you're trying to hit everything in yeah there. and um, i think now with the three days they're gonna allow you to do that cause... yeah because i mean i think our biggest problem last year was one that i didn't have gold bat and two because we had booked our weekend so tight yeah which was a good thing you know because it was fun because we put out 20 something videos that week oh god yeah we did um, which was fun and cool, but then it was also like, well, we didn't rest. But yeah. No, it was like literally Saturday came, we did everything. I uploaded everything on my computer that night, and then Sunday I thought, okay, I should just bring my computer with me. That way I can upload all my footage so like, while I'm waiting in line for panels, Yeah, clear more space off my thing, because I think Sunday was our busier day. We had more podcasts and panels that day. Saturday we had a couple panels. No, no, no. Saturday we definitely did two podcasts. Yeah, that's right. And then Sunday we had a podcast, and yeah, I mean, if you're gonna, we had more panels on Sunday. If you're gonna go into this a YouTuber, um, and I definitely learned the first year. That's why the second year I came with the full on everything I had equipment wise. Be ready to, I mean, you bring all the equipment you can. Um, if you're planning on film the panels. Bring extra batteries. Make sure everything's charged up. Uh, bring a laptop if you have to, just so you can upload your footage yeah. and keep going throughout the day. I mean, it's just, I mean, for us, we had multiple cameras going for the panels so we can get everything we had. Yeah, I, and I, I think that's something we can do as we get closer is, you know, some do's and don'ts as it comes to midsummer. Midsummer, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think going back, just going back to Han X here, is once again, lower that price. You keep the same location, but if it's too expensive, maybe go to a smaller location. Definitely. Uh, and, you know, just I think there needs to be more advertising because hey, I, I think like everyone hears about Monster Palooza. Midsummer. Midsummer, Son of Monster Palooza. Yeah. They were hearing about Scare LA and talking well, about that remember, downfall. I remember but, last year when we had Jackie on the podcast for the first time, she she mentioned Hot X to us. I was like, I've never even heard of Hot X. Yeah, I, you know, from my understanding, it may have only been in second year. Yeah, because I know it was up north, I believe, and they brought it down here. Yeah. Um. So. And uh, I think it was cool because, like, you know, there was some really cool people there. Like, Decade was there. Decade was there. There was that ballerina group that looked pretty cool. Yeah. we met Really up, cool vendors. Uh, there's that one group, and I forget their name, um, but I have their name on my sticker. But remember, we went up. They they were a... a the one that gave you a shot. A shot, yeah. yeah. They were cool. Um, no, there was a lot of cool people there. They had Jason Voorhees walking around. Yeah, cosplay, and Michael even, Myers. you know, I think because they had so much room in the back, they could have done some other panels or maybe expanded yeah. the panels. I know, like, when we went to Ted's, like, we got a seat, obviously, but there was a group. There was a lot of people in the back. A lot of people in the back that were just had to stand. Which I'm glad we got our seats because the way I had my shit set up, it was, like, perfect. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So. Link, um, the link will be somewhere. Yeah. So that raises the next question as to what's next for us. So the next major event for us will be monster palooza yeah um i can't, i'm not uh, off the top of my head i can't well maybe march madness at knots but that that's a, it's coming up this weekend is it this weekend yeah shit it's saturday that's right oh oh well actually if this yeah that's this weekend yeah, yeah this, this is this is today we're filming on on a saturday well we're technically filming on sunday yeah uh, March 11th at 1248 March a.m. first, not 11th. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I said 11th. Oh, because the lightsaber's in the way. <laughs> and I'm kind of tired. So, I mean... It's 1248 a.m. Maybe, maybe um, March Madness for us. If we can snag a couple free tickets, um, that will be... So, yeah, that's maybe what we'll be doing Saturday, actually. That's maybe what we'll be doing. And then hitting... Or is it Sunday? It's Saturday, Sunday. I don't know. We gotta double check. We'll talk to Jackie and Ruth and all them tomorrow. We'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, uh, my cousin Andrew will be having a art exhibit at the Westminster Mall um, Saturday as well. So if you guys want to go check out some cool art and a bunch of talented artists, I highly suggest it. My cousin, uh, if you guys don't know, does our a lot of our logos for the channel. Shoot the shit, uh, Mindless Horror Podcast, uh, the Bench Warmers logo. 
just to name a couple. Yeah. And um, he's uh, one of the best graphic design artists uh, and artists that um, I know. I mean, I know, and my family's very talented with art, and he's in the top three, I think. I think he's number, I would say he's like number two or three. He's like that good. Yeah. Because, you know, my family, I, yeah, it's really hard to actually even rank them, dude, because they all have their own different styles. Yeah, they all do different styles. So, I mean, it's, you know, they're all talented in their own way, but he's going to be out there, and we're going to go down there and, you know, shoot some support. So, if you guys are in the area, or if you guys, you know, have nothing to do on a Saturday, Westminster Mall, um, they're having an art exhibit. And my cousin Andrew will be there. So if you see us, say hi. And if you see Andrew, buy some stuff from him because he's got some really good stuff. Yeah. That was a little plug right there. But, uh, yeah, we got... Shameless plug. Shameless plug. So um, hopefully March Madness is one of the things we do. Um, that'd be cool to see a lot of the haunt monsters and stuff and people that we've had on the podcast. People, people cosplay there too, right? That's at Knott's, though. I don't think they do. No, no, not at Midsummer, but at uh, uh, Monster Palooza. Yeah. yeah, and then we got Monster Palooza coming up. I had already bought my tickets. Um, Sammy's gonna um, wait a little bit and buy his tickets, but buy them soon, man. They're gonna sell out. I know. Um, but Monster Palooza, yeah, that's it's more of a makeup kind of place. Huh. So you'll see a lot of makeup artists and everything, probably live demos and stuff. Yeah, so. which live demos are pretty sick. But I think the main reason why we're going is to try to see, because usually HHN does a panel. Yeah. And usually they announce something there. And I've I've never been to Monster Palooza. I've always wanted to go. I wanted to go last year, and I didn't get a chance. This year, I definitely am going. I want to check it out. So we'll be there Saturday, May 9th, and Sunday, May 10th. Um, at least I will. Um, yeah. And if Sammy can only make one of the days, or if he can make both of them, that'd be cool. Same thing with Robert. We're going to try to get him down there. Um. And also, we're going to be going into production pretty soon for our first short horror film. Yeah, I, I have no idea what it's about, so you'd have to tell the audience. Cause... Um, not giving too much away, but the title of the film is called Twisted Tales. It's going to be an anthology series. Uh, we are kind of slowly plotting the first season, and yeah. uh, everything uh, is it's going to be awesome. I mean, we have a great cast, um, a lot of people that we've met at Haunt, and I've already met with the... Uh, the main villain for the first episode um this past week uh, we had a little production meeting to talk a little bit about his character um when it comes closer to filming or stuff or whatever we will release mo more info about it i really want to try to keep it you know a surprise under wraps yeah yeah so i mean i will give as much as i can but without giving out too much you know what i mean so that's definitely um that's going to be happening. We have a production meeting. As of this recording, we've already, we haven't had it, but we've already had it. Um, and I'm hoping in, we. In five words, tell us what's it, what it's about. Five words. Um, very, very deeply hella disturbing. <laughs> That's five words. Well, <laughs> in five different words. Oh, uh, disturbing, <laughs> horror, um, phobias, because it does deal with some phobias. Um, uh, thriller, and first episode, um, death, I guess. <laughs> I guess that'll be throughout the whole series, though. But you'll you'll Death see. Death is inevitable. It is inevitable. So, um, the and I am Iron Man. The 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 inspiration for this is behind uh, that I got from this series was uh, two things: American Horror Story and The Twilight Zone. Okay. So those are those are just well, that's just what I'm gonna leave you guys with. That's the two most biggest inspirations I got for this. Um, the goal is to film. We're gonna be shooting two, so the goal is to film them back to back and release them in October. So that's why we're going to start filming them now because a lot of the people we're working with usually work haunt. So yeah. I want to try to get them out of the way before everyone gets busy and release them in October. Probably have a trailer uh, maybe in August or September to kind of hype it up. And then, yeah, I'm excited. Definitely. It'll be fun. Yeah, it's a big little Halloween series for you guys. Um, we got, Like I said, we got an amazing cast. And we will start revealing them little by little. I think so far on Shoot the Shit, we revealed Jen's in it. And I think... No, we haven't revealed who the clown is yet. But Jen from Shoot the Shit is in it. She's going to be playing in the first episode. Yeah. Um, and we got amazing people on this. So 
Even you have a cameo in it, buddy. That's a new thing. We both have cameos in it. Oh, wow. As ourselves and as other characters, so that's going to be fun. Oh, so I have to play two people. Yeah. One of them's already easy. I mean, I don't know how to, I don't know how to play myself. I know, right? That's the hard part. Um, but yeah, it's just good to get back to the roots of the Milo Sword podcast. And with that, uh, to kind of bring Some news, huh? back to light, um, I, I got like two news things. Um, so, do you remember that movie that came out a while back, Escape Room? Uh, I heard about it. I never watched it. I never watched it either. I know it's like an escape room, basically. It's like... Instead it's, of it being fun, it twists on them. It's to, like, survive and stuff. So, I guess... Yeah. It kind of reminds me... Of, based on the trailer I saw, it reminded me of Saw. I guess they're making a part two to that. And wow. It's, and it's going to be released December of this year. Dang, okay. So, um... Nothing says Christmas like horror, right? Especially in the escape room. Um, so, I, I have... I mean, like you said... It's basically the escape room, but except instead of for fun, you're fighting for your life. Yeah. Um. So we'll see how that goes. I still, I, I kind of want to watch the first one, but we'll see. I also, uh, most recently, speaking of horror, I watched um, They Live this today. It's a John Carpenter '80s film with yeah. Roddy Roddy Piper. Yeah. And um, it's actually pretty good. It's about like aliens and stuff. Um, it, it came out like the '80s, but uh. It's cool to see Piper. I mean, it's got one of the greatest infamous lines ever in cinema, which was, uh, came here to do two things, uh, kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Yeah. Gum. Um, but it's about, of course, aliens, and it's, it's a trippy movie. I would love to eventually, down the line, I'll say this right now, see a reboot for that movie. Huh. Because I feel like with today's technology, they can knock it out of the park. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, haven't, I don't even know what the last horror movie I watched was. It's wild. Was it? Annabelle Comes Home. Oh, you're right. I did watch Annabelle Comes Home last week. What would you think of that, by the way? I thought it was fun. It was an interesting movie, huh? It was fun. It was very predictable. It was in the Warrens' house, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, which kind of reminds us of the video we'll be hopefully putting out this week. Or it may have already been out. I don't know. I don't know what our timeline ever look like. Links in the description if it's not out. If it is out. Mm-hmm. If it's not out, we're sorry. Yeah. yeah. But um. anyway. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Invisible Man, we definitely got to check out. Yeah, I know. We were going to do that today, but then things changed. And so we'll schedule it sometime pretty soon. <laughs> sometime. When it's free time. Yeah. Um, maybe we could do it Sunday in the morning. Unless it's fucking March Madness, damn it. I got to find out about March Madness still. I, I yeah. don't know what day that is. <laughs> I just know it's next weekend. One of the days Which that- is, makes me very excited because that means we're halfway... Till haunt season. Till haunt season again, and I really miss our bench. We get to reunite, hopefully, on the bench. So if you guys yeah. see us at Not Scary Farm, and we're in, you know, we'll be in Kmart most maybe. We'll we'll see everybody first, but yeah, we'll be in Kmart, uh, you know, crying on our bench because we miss it. If we can chain it to us, we would and bring it everywhere. Just carrying it as we go to different spots. <laughs> Take it to Disneyland, and everything. Have our own bench. Yeah, I was really excited because Thursday instead of going to the Queen Mary. Selene was supposed to go to Knott's. Yeah. Um, and so I was going to tell her to take a picture of it. That would have been cool. Yeah. By the way, you did the Queen Mary Ghost Tour. How was that? I can't be sad. Huh? I can't be sad. Sad? Why? I said I can't be sad. You're going to have to cut that. Why? Because I was supposed to be at work. Yeah, because people watch this. They all have, I gave my business card to <laughs> everyone at work. It was during the night, though, wasn't it? Yeah, but I was sick from work. Oh, my God. Why couldn't you just gone along with it like it was on a fucking Saturday or something? Because I just said that you went on a Thursday. Oh. Well, why'd you freaking... Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Good job cutting. Good job. <laughs> uh, Blumhouse and Lay Wan- Wanell, um, the guy who did Visible Man recently. Wait, so wait. Before we get on this, because I have a question, because you know more than about... Poorer than me. Um, did he do Saw? He did the first Saw. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, he did the first Saw. He wrote it, and I think he actually is in it. I okay. And he also was in charge of all the Insidious films. Because <coughs> I was I was on Bloody Disgusting, and I yeah. guess you can see Billy the Puppet. Yeah, yeah. At one and uh, Invisible Man? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, um, I think that was one of the first movies he... One of the first horror movies he actually wrote or something. That'd be really... It's really cool if you're successful... 
you know, always to play it, try to find Tribute. slight ways to pay homage to your first film. Yeah, that was really cool. Or your first successful film. So he just, of course, he just came out with The Invisible Man, which is killing it right now in the box office. Which and Blumhouse reviews. did, right? Yeah, and uh, review wise. What happened? We can talk about this after, but continue with The Invisible Man, and then I'll bring up what I want to bring up. Um, so I guess they just signed a two year overall deal with him for film and, film and television. Oh, that'd be cool. So not only will he be doing a lot of Blumhouse movies, but he'll be doing. He'll be in charge of some TV shows as well. That's really good. You know, so, do well in the theater, and they'll get them money, and they'll do give you other jobs. So, so far, it looks like <laughs> Blumhouse's most successful franchises are Paranormal Activity, which they haven't made in years, but they're planning on making another one pretty soon. Are they soon. going to? Yeah, they're planning on it. The Purge. Yeah. Um, but I feel like they killed that one all the way through, because they had so much of it. Yeah. They really saturated it. Well, it, it was a good trilogy. And then they made the first purge, and I was like, okay. And then they did the TV show, which the TV show. I haven't watched went, it. The TV show just went more into depth of other people's point of views. Yeah. And then this net, this new season, it talks about. It actually takes place five minutes, the last five minutes of the purge, and yeah. what people do after the purge. Like if they don't get to do, if they don't, if they don't succeed in doing what they need to do. What it does to them. What it does to them the whole year leading up yeah. to the next one. Yeah. Um, and then of course, recent Halloween movies. Yeah, of course. Um, Invisible Man. Yeah. Uh, Blumhouse is very much a hit and miss company. Do you think they're going to do more monsters? So, that's funny you bring that up, actually. I was reading another article on Blade discussing that, uh, um, Lay said he wanted it, he has an idea if he, if he had the opportunity and if he did it to reboot Dracula. Uh, I thought you were going to say Creature, but Dracula would be cool. Yeah. Cause I feel like everyone does Dracula. But I feel like I feel like no one touches Creature because it's a, it's got a big fan base, and yeah. they, they fuck it up. To the but I feel like Dracula also has a really big fan base because like well the all the original done, monsters do because it's been done so much. Yeah, like I feel like people don't really touch Frankenstein. Yeah, as Fra- much Frankenstein Creature. I feel like Frankenstein and Creature are the two hardest ones to do. Yeah. Because a lot of people want to know what the monster is going to look like. And same thing with the creature. Yeah. Is he going to be CGI or is he going to be a man in a suit? Yeah. And what the hell is he going to look like? You know what I mean? So yeah. I think a lot of people are scared to touch him. The last time we got a creature reference of some sort was in the 2017 reboot of The Mummy with Tom Cruise. Yeah. And there's a scene in there where they're talking, I think, with, uh, I think it was Dr. Jackal, I think. Or, yeah, because they were trying to set up the whole... The whole Dark, dark Universe. universe yeah. And there's one scene where you actually can see in a jar of water the creature's hand. Oh. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I want to see Invisible Man. I've heard very good reviews about it. Yeah. And I don't know. I think the Invisible Man is a very underrated villain in the horror universe. Um, he's pretty scary because you can't. No, see him. he is scary, but I think he's like I think he gets overshadowed by the other like major ones. Yeah, well, you know, you know. So uh, I'm excited though. Well, we're gonna go try to see it sometime. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I wanted to bring up is another movie that Blumhouse did, and I have no idea how it did. So I'm curious if you know how did Fantasy Island do or whatever it was called. It got shitty reviews. I oh I I really felt like it was going to based on its trailer. But... Yeah, I mean it was a reboot. Of a show that they did in like the seventies or eighties. Oh, they did a show about it. I didn't know. Yeah, that. and um, I've seen so many bad reviews and everything about it. They just it says at some points it's just boring and goes nowhere. Yeah. And yeah, I I I don't have any plans to see it. I didn't want to see it when it came out. What if Four Nights does it this year though? I don't think they would. Tales of Blumhouse Three. However, this is the same company who did. Truth or Dare. Dare. Yeah. Horrors of Blumhouse, Blumhouse th- Horrors of Blumhouse three. I mean, I could see them doing maybe Invisible Man and Halloween, just to get Halloween ready for Halloween Kills. And Fantasy Island. No Fantasy Island. Come on, it'll be hilarious. No. For the memes. It wouldn't even make sense though. There's not really horror aspects to it. Well, I mean, I mean, you see people get killed and stuff, but there's not like an actual killer or someone, you know. I mean, so it wouldn't make really much sense. The company is the bad guy. I understand that, but there's not much sense it would make into it in a maze. What, are you going to have Michael Pena's character pop out at you? Like, what the fuck? That's not scary. No. It may scare you, but it's not going to scare me. You know what would scare me, though? Watching that one girl get, like, killed by that other guy. 
The one that looks like the revenge one? That's pretty terrifying. Um, oh, should I, we should talk about this, too, in other news. Remember that movie, The Hunt, that was supposed to come out in September? Oh, yes, yes. It's it is coming, coming back. It's coming out next week. All right, nobody doing March anything 13th. stupid. I know, right? I want to see this movie. I want to see this movie, too. It's the talked about movie because of that whole situation. No one doing anything stupid. Yeah. It's it's being advertised as the most talked about movie no one's ever saw. Yeah, because... No, well, the shooting happened. They were going to release the movie. And the Universal pulled the plug on it. They're like, we don't even know if we're going to release it now. Yeah, they was going to... They waited so many months, and they're like, we're going to release it. And yeah. I was like, fine. Because it, it actually looked good, and it had a good cast. Yeah, it had a really good cast. And so I was really much looking forward to seeing what this movie was going to be about. Yeah. But a lot of people are like comparing it to like a, it's a bunch of like white freaking um, like neo-Nazis fucking playing like you know killing games and stuff i guess there's a book based off of this probably i mean everything's based off of something nowadays so um but that's about it for me yeah i don't think i have anything either all right ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in for the miles for podcast i know this year this week was an audio one because we were too lazy to set up cameras and it's late (laughs) late and we wanted to test out our new audio so yeah it worked for the best so hopefully it sounds good. I'm sure it does. It sounded really good when I was listening to it, but when I edit it, we'll see what's up. Yeah. Um, what if you guys think we should keep doing like audio like this um, with cameras? Just let us know. And you let us know how this sounds. You let us know what horror news is out there, and you let us know what you guys thought about this podcast. As always, I'm your host, Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. And we are the Knights of Horror. This is the Mindless Horror Podcast, and we will see you next week. Peace. Peace.